Hi there, Kevin Furman here. You've reached a series of videos called and Percussion Olympics. And Percussion Olympics is a, is a basic set of uh, etudes and exercises to help teach um, percussion and, and the basics thereof. So uh, today we're going to talk about wood block and tempo block. So those two fairly simple things, uh, you kind of think, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a wood block, you hit it, whatever. Well, there are some basics I think we should cover just to make sure you're not doing anything to harm it or or you're getting the best sound possible. And, and as a side note, all these basic videos really are about creating a good sound on whatever instrument you're trying to play. So that's sort of the point. And, you know, without all the bells and whistles, I'm just trying to shed light on all the, all the stuff here. Anyway, so let's get right into it. Uh, wood block is literally a block of wood. That's sort of the point to it. So uh, uh, it seems kind of funny right now saying it that way, but it's kind of true, that's what it is. Now you'll notice that this, this wood block, fairly decent one, um, has a, there's a slit here on one side. It's only on one side, right? And it's just there. This is called the mouth of the wood block, okay? And that's where the sound is actually going to come out. So when you play, you want to actually face that out towards the audience. A lot of people tend to face it towards themselves, which makes some sense because then you can see where it is. But really, you want the sound to go out. So I would recommend that. Um, and when you play, there's, sorry, when you play, there's actually good and, and not so good sounds. Um, a lot of people tend to think of it like a snare drum, which is a, a valid sound that does work. Um, in the in the concert band setting, though, many times that may not be enough sound. It, it it's got a very pointed, high pitch kind of attack to it. You can darken up the sound and kind of give it a fuller sound if you play on the shoulder of the stick, right on the edge of the mouth. So it all, those two are the, I guess, the sounds that most people would use. Um, I tend to use that one, the second one, if I'm going to use drumsticks, okay, which brings up the whole implement thing, what you use to hit a, a wood block with. Um, I tend actually to go not to drumsticks first, and I wanted to show you that because that's where most people go, but I would recommend actually kind of a hard rubber. And these, um, these are, you know, your general run the mill hard rubber mallets. That gets a really big full sound as opposed to the other two, right? Or that one actually gets more of the block sounding. The, the mallets, the hard rubber mallets, get more of the resonance of the wood block uh, from my ears. Now, um, I also brought some of, just as comparison, put, put in here um, like soft rubber. If you gotta play really, really quietly, and quick that may be a place to use these but generally I don't I don't really use the soft rubber on it I use hard rubber also again as comparison I'm, I'm just gonna show this one time because this is not a good idea these are ceramic um, bell mallets you never want to use these on anything wood a xylophone a marimba wood block anything that's wooden um, plastic is fine but wood you definitely don't get you a nice bright sound but you can easily crack a wood block with something like this which by the way drumsticks also I've seen tons and tons of wood blocks in schools that are cracked and I know somebody was just trying to play really loud or they were just being obnoxious but they're just playing too loud and they cracked it and, and then that was it so I'm not a big fan of drumsticks on there I think the safest bet is that hard rubber so that would be my first go-to on a wood block now there are plastic wood blocks, which I mentioned, okay? Here's one, uh, I'm not here to endorse any particular kind, there's lots out there. Uh, I'm sure many of you will, will recognize this, uh, but it's a plastic version of this, and you'll see it's got a mouth and, and the whole bit. Uh, this version has a raised ridge on one side, that's the, meant to be the place where you hit the wood block. Now, with sticks on one of these, these sound great. A drumstick on a plastic wood block, psh, great, or a plastic block. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, you know, there are names for them. I'm just going to call it a wood block now. Drumstick on there, awesome. Even on the other side, still good, right? If you use the tip, it, I don't know, it, it's okay for quieter stuff. So what I'll do, if, if I need to play quiet and fast and use one of these, I'll tend to still play on that ridge. 
um, with drumsticks because it works great, easy to do, easy to transition from other instruments. So with a plastic version, you I think the stick thing actually is good. Now, can you use the hard rubber? Sure, it still sounds good. In a way, nice full sound again. Um, with the ridge, it's really hard to aim and get the same same um, uh, place to hit. So what I well I'll do if I'm going to use mallets, I'll use the flat side. So it's more like a like an actual wood block at that point. All right, so there's the wood block. Um, so as far as um, you know, some people say hold it, don't hold it. It all depends on what kind of wood block you have. As you can see, this one can be mounted onto a stand. That's also valid. Uh, the, this, um, if you can see closely enough, uh, has some holes on either end here. There is an attachment you can have that actually um, clamps onto, say, a bass drum hoop or a table or something like that. So you could actually have it hanging or off of a stand or something like that. Um, most people don't use those kinds of things anymore. Um, they'll just use a plastic one if they're if they're if they're mounting it. They'll just use one of these. Um, but it can be done. Um, so usually I'll set it on a tray table or a stand with a towel on it. We've talked about that in other videos, you know, using a, a music stand as a tray stand. Put a towel on it and you can put your mallets on there. You can use small, use it for small instruments, that sort of thing. I tend to use a tray table. This is a very big one, but something like that is, is ideal because then you can move it where you need it and it's solid and you don't have to worry about it tipping or and that stuff. I tend to use music stands mostly for mallets and sticks and then tray tables for other things whenever possible. Okay, so so there's wood block. I mean, you've got your wood and plastic versions. Uh, I'm sure somebody's come up with some other version out there that I'm not going to talk about today because those these are by far the most common. The main thing to keep in mind is I would go with the hard rubber mallets to make a good sound. Okay, so now the other thing we got to talk about is the temple blocks. Now I'm going to move this over a little bit. So this is more in the picture here. So temple blocks basically are graduated size wood blocks. So they're, they're the same sort of thing. But as you can tell, the design is quite a bit different. The mouth is much bigger. It's actually two pieces, well, four pieces of wood, four or five, that are glued together really well. And these are wooden. Uh, they make plastic versions of these also, and different companies make those. I think plastic is a great way to go for most high schools, just because they get a lot of abuse, and some people don't know what they're doing at first, and so it's a lot harder to break them. Uh, also, in the marching band setting, you're usually, you know, hitting pretty strong. You got some loud sounds going on, so you're going to hit it pretty well. So plastic is really good for outdoors and loud playing and just general use in a, in a school setting. Wood does sound better, but the plastic ones are really close. So it sort of depends on your application. I've got this set of wood ones. Um, same th sort of thing applies to how you play them. Uh, these tend to resonate a little bit better than a block of wood, so playing like that... Pretty good. Um, playing on the edge is more ideal. That's actually more the sound. So you get that kind of hollow, rounder sound. This has got a very pointed attack to it. So really, a drumstick on the edge, great. You know, um, uh, if I if there are times when I've used this in a setup with with a drum set setting, I've done that where I'll put it on a, a simple stand like this, and then I'll have it to where I can play with drumsticks. The rubber mallet thing still applies. These are actually a little bright for th these these temple blocks because they're they're pretty live. Uh, never use ceramic or plastic on them. I don't even want to show you that. So the soft rubber, again, if you want a softer tech, these can work halfway decently on temple blocks, especially at the lower end. You get a big kind of big sound. So I think sticks on the edge, using the shoulder of the stick on the edge of the the mouth is your best bet. That is kind of your best sound. The hard rubber, maybe these are a little too hard. So if you need it really bright and, and cutting, these could work. Uh, with anything with wood, be careful not to overplay it. You play too hard, you're going to splinter off wood and then it's going to change the sound and or break and crack and all that. So temple block, really, um, it's just a matter of getting used to that there are different pitches. It'll be written with uh, five different pitches, usually on the lines of a, of a five-line staff. Wood block will be randomly on any space. It <laughs> depends on who's writing it. Um, uh, so there's no, there's no standard. The temple block tends to be the five lines because there's five, normally a set of five, so that makes some sense. Uh, the wood block can be kind of in any space. It'll be labeled and you go from there. So Again, uh, sticks, okay, 
on the edge of a wood block on plastic great okay edge temple block great uh, i think the hard rubber mount works best on a on a wood actual wood wood block sitting down on the table and you get a really really clear wood block sound all right so there's your there's your basics of wood block uh, from there you read the rhythms watch your dynamics use good technique all that still applies so anything else from the other videos that you would apply to that idea would certainly apply to this idea. Um, also in setup, sometimes you have to have a lot of instruments, so make sure it's in a place where you can get to it quickly. Uh, you're not in the way of hitting another instrument, or you know, you're not putting it underneath something where you're going to hit another instrument while you're playing. Think real basic things like that. But uh, from there, it's you know learn your part, play it well, get a good sound every time you play. There's wood block and temple block. Pretty simple. Pretty straight ahead, but then again, make sure you're using the right thing, get a good sound, and don't hurt it. All right, thanks a lot for checking it out. We'll see you at the next video.